Regardless of your job title or role, you probably prefer to avoid tedious and repetitive tasks. In this lesson, we'll review common best practices that flowgrammers can use to build scalable and reusable solutions. First, let's discuss the different ways that experienced flowgrammers accomplish this task. When you want a scalable flow, it ought to be generic, so that it's applicable to a broader number of use cases. In other words, flows that are configurable and customizable are flows that you can implement repeatedly in different contexts, rather than spending time building new ones. Well-designed flows should also have a minimum number of steps. After all, why use more steps than you need to? It's okay if you initially create a flow that's more complex than necessary. Afterwards, just remember to ask yourself, how can I simplify this? Chances are, after you better understand your use case, you'll be able to see ways to cut out steps and make them more efficient. Scalable flows are also legible. When building your flow, consider if anyone else will need to use the flow. If so, will they find it easy to understand? Good organization and layout can go a long way, but don't forget that you can use note cards to document the steps in your flow if they aren't naturally intuitive. The documentation can help you too, in the event you don't need to look at this flow for several months and forget exactly how it works. Reusable parts and easy monitoring are two important components of scalable flows. It's helpful to have flows that use modular, well-designed child flows so you can abstract common operations and reuse them with other parent flows. Additionally, well-designed child flows that implement the related best practices that we've discussed in previous lessons will make monitoring their activity as simple task. When you have a modular setup, this separation makes it easier to pinpoint the exact location where an error occurred. Finally, scalable flows need to be flexible. This is less of a concern if you're only working in a single environment. But if you're developing flows for a larger organization, you will likely have multiple environments to allow for testing. In this situation, you'll want to make your flows flexible so that you can easily switch from a test environment to production on an as-needed basis. If you're working as part of a team across multiple organizations, then flow packs are an amazing way to share your work and quickly migrate from one organization to another. Here are some suggestions for using and working with flow packs. First, if you're in an organization that has multiple instances for workflows, you should have a single source of truth where your team develops them. This way, everything is created and tested in a central location. These flows can be used as templates to be deployed and set up in other instances. As you may have come to expect, naming conventions are important. In the same way, documenting your flows can help others understand them more easily Using standard naming conventions can help with understanding and identification as well. You should also keep all related parent and child flows in the same folder so that they retain their parent and child relationships when exported. In order to export a flow pack, click on the gear icon next to the folder name and select Export. You will then see a message prompting you to download the flow pack. Finally, we recommend storing your imported flow packs in a shared folder so that all members of your organization have access to them by default. To import a flow pack, navigate to the folder that will receive the imported flows. Click on the gear icon and select Import. Now select Choose File and find the flow pack you wish to import from your files. By future-proofing your work, you can save yourself a lot of time down the road. There are a number of methods to accomplish this, but overall you want to focus on minimizing how often you set up the same set of cards and certain types of inputs. Naturally, you can leverage child flows to minimize repetition. If you're managing a large ecosystem of flows, you may find a lot of value in creating an error notification system that routes certain kinds of messages to a single location. You can centralize a flow that manages notifications, like we discussed in a previous lesson, and allow other flows to call it when a problem occurs. Your notification flow would presumably contain inputs that collect enough information from the caller flows and post the messages to a single email address team alias, or its own channel. Global system values can greatly minimize the amount of time flow updates require because you can make a single update that will propagate to all relevant flows. Naturally, tables provide a simple way to set up global values that you can access through your flows. These suggestions might not suit every use case, but they were informed by a lot of hands-on experience. If a suggestion doesn't fit, it's still worth taking some time to think of other ways you might be able to scale and make reusable solutions. Consider everything that you've learned in these lessons and how to apply these concepts to your flowgramming plans. Putting more effort into the planning phase will save you a lot of time later on.